headline bond market focus now jonathan sheridan from fig securities joins now a lot of the focus understandably john has been standard and poor's yesterday downgrading the outlook if you like for australia's AAA credit rating look in terms of reaction australian government bonds very very little suggests not too big a concern good afternoon james yes absolutely right look i think uh, with the election result there was always a chance that uh, the ratings agencies would make some statement about the AAA rating, which they have done, but it's important to note that uh, it's not um, in line for an immediate downgrade, it's just on watch, so um, the, the usual odds for an action after that are about one in three, so it's just saying, look, we're, we're looking at what's happening, we'll monitor the budget situation and the level of government debt to revenue, and if that doesn't improve, in, or, or at least there's no plan to improve it in the next couple of years, then we might take some action downwards on the rating. So in light of that, understandable really that, um, that nothing really happened in the market. Um, you know, and if you see the GILTS uh, reaction to the UK being downgraded two notches, you know, they, they actually rallied down to their lowest yield in about 25 to 30 years. So, um, you know, we also know with the US at a AA plus rating that uh, not being AAA rated is not really linked in these strange times to higher government bond yields. What have you made more broadly of, of this sort of dynamic we're seeing at the moment where a lot of investors um, seemingly perversely looking for uh, capital growth in the bond market and looking for, for income out of equities? Yeah, look, it's a very strange situation we find ourselves in. Uh, I, I think that equity markets are, are effectively being treated as bonds these days. You know, it's, mm. um, the equity market keeps rallying as, as long as there's more talk of, uh, of stimulus, which is basically to drive bond yields down. So I think it's just a search for yield anywhere, uh, and that's what's driven people to get yield out of the equities market because there's not enough coming out of the, the bond market. And when you're talking about government bond markets, I think that you know, particularly with the ECB and their, their huge buying program, that it's a case of who's the greater fool. You know, mm. if you've got all these bonds trading at negative yields, well, you'd only buy them if you think you can sell them to someone else for an even lower yield. So um, that greater fool is the ECB at the moment. Uh, looking more broadly, and obviously tonight we get the non-farm payrolls, keen, keen focus for, for global investors. What are you expecting? And then consequently, what sort of reaction would you expect in, in treasuries? Yeah, look, I think um, we're all expecting a rebound from the really poor number that we had last month. Mm. Um, whether we get that or not, uh, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, as I understand it, the uh, the numbers were taken pre-Brexit, so there's likely to be some discounting of, of a positive result in any case by the market. So um, really, you know, the labour market's been the focus of the Fed over the last two years I suppose and if, if we get a weaker number we'll just see that uh, rally in treasuries continue. And look, fair to say f again from the market's positioning no chance of a, a rate hike this year. I know f um, futures pricing 13% of a chance of a rate hike by December. Yeah that's right I mean the market's always been well under the, e the expectations or predictions of the Fed members themselves mm. and, and I think the Fed uh, are coming to that realisation, you know, we saw the St. Louis President Bullard be the, uh, the real low uh, in those dots uh, at the last meeting, expecting only one rate hike in the next two years. So um, the thing is really, do they have the courage to uh, increase rates as they need to in the face of this global uncertainty? Mm. I, I suspect that, uh, you know, given that Yellen was a, uh, you know, a real... Uh, pupil, if you like, uh, of Bernanke uh, and Greenspan before him, that we'll see the dovish stance taken, and I suspect, even though I would like to see a rate hike, I think we won't see one this year. Considering that, then, the low interest rate environment globally and, you know, negative yield on, on many sovereign bonds at the moment, how attractive do you think corporate bonds and corporate issuances become to investors looking for some sort of return? Yeah, look, I mean, that's clearly what, what we do here at FIG in the main is, is the corporate bond market. So we're, we're a big believer in that particular market. I think when you're searching for yield, you know, it's important um, to realise that central banks are trying to push investors up the risk curve. Mm. Um, that's the whole point. Uh, they want money to flow into the economy. Um, but when you're, when you're searching for yield, you, you really have to take account of that risk. And we wouldn't just pile straight into hi, uh, uh, high yield bonds, for example. And that applies to high yielding equities at the same time. And corporate bonds are the nice sort of m spot in the middle. If you think about default rates in Australia over the last 30 years in investment grade bonds, it's about 1% on average for any five year period. So they're very, very, very safe indeed. 
and you can still get you know four to five percent on a really solid investment grade bond for five years mm. in in the Australian corporate bond market, which is considering the global context, as you said, with you know probably about eleven or twelve trillion dollars worth of government and corporate bonds trading with negative yields, a four to five percent return for five years is, is actually very good. Indeed. John Sheridan, appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thanks, James. Well,